Hey guys, it's Dan, and for some of you, it may seem like it's been a very long time since I've uploaded a book review, but it is time for another book review. And I'm here to review We Need to Do Something by Max Booth III, an author. And I say it like that because the way I was introduced to Max Booth III was through his ghoulish podcast which is a horror-themed podcast, and the first episode I listened to <clears throat> of that podcast featured Sadie Hartman, who is known as Mother Horror in the horror community, and ever since then, I was just, like, in awe, and I had to have more, and I just kept listening to more and more of his podcast, and then I found out he does another podcast, which is Stephen King-themed podcast. If you're into Stephen King books and bad dick jokes, then you need to t check out uh, Castle Rock Radio, which is his other podcast, which he does with his wife. Now, enough of all that business. Let's get on with the book review. We need to do something. <clears throat> this book is published by his uh, publishing house, Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, and this is soon to be a major motion picture. I, of course, I don't have the copy that says it's going to be a film soon. I got this before then. Uh, but it is going to be a major motion picture. I, I'm hoping it's going to be released. I'm hoping it's not going to be one of those movies that gets filmed, gets produced, and then just never sees the light of day because I'll be deeply saddened if that's the case. Um... After reading this, I definitely want to see the film adaptation of it. I don't know exactly who all the people are that are in it, but um, if you search the internet, you can find out who is starring in it. Uh, Josh Mailerman um, helped produce this with the author. Um, I guess originally, from listening to author interviews, Max had originally written this as a screenplay, so it was always kind of intended to be a film, I guess. But it has a very, very short synopsis. It is a novella. A family on the verge of self-destruction finds themselves isolated in their bathroom during a tornado warning. And I'm going to have to throw out some trigger warnings. I know, I hate trigger warnings personally, but I want to be an upfront reviewer and just, like, you know, let people know that, hey... <laughs> There's triggering issues. Um, there's mentions of alcoholism, self-harm, and just different scenarios involving that. And hopefully I've covered the wide range of triggers, possibly triggering things that could be in this book. But, you know, you're probably thinking to yourself, Dan, this is about a family who's trapped in a bathroom. How great. And what makes that horror? Because, yes, this is a horror book. Um, I'm going to say it has elements of the weird bizarro too, um, but very much so, I get the feel when I read this, it's only like 110 pages, but Max really gets in, you can tell he really gets into these characters, and you, the characters are really believable in my opinion, because it just, I feel like he gets so into the dialogue of this small family that we kind of, we you know, there's all this tension building in this bathroom. They're trapped in this bathroom, the tornado, and they're kind of worried, you know, about what's going to happen. Are they going to, you know, is it going to be a bad tornado where it's going to destroy their neighborhood? Is it going to wreck their house? You know, stuff like that. But then it, he just kind of ramps up the tension, and things start to get from bad to worse. And then I don't want to reveal anything without, because I don't want to spoil the book for any potential readers, but things kind of ramp up, we kind of learn a little bit of a background and how and why things happen the way they do and the way they led to this event, um, and then the way it's written, like, it kind of, like, I'm saying he ramps up the tension, but he also uses the, um, the anxiety of the people by repeating certain phrases over and over again, we get the feeling that they're feeling really anxious. They're, there's so much anxiety that they're not sure what their future holds. And just like that, he, it's done so well. And I feel like there's the one character, the little boy named Bobby. Um, the way he kind of jokes around, I feel like that's Max. Like, when I was reading this, I kept thinking of Bobby being Max Booth because 
just the way Max's like sense of humor is on podcasts and stuff, he kind of has this like this kind of sense of humor where I could see him being like a 12 year old boy. So yeah, I mean, I totally I found this very entertaining. Um, it's definitely not what I anticipated. I wasn't sure what I was going in when I um picked this up and because this is my first time ever reading this author. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect, but I just know that a lot of people in the community were like, oh my god, this book was so good, you need to get out and read this book. So I went and bought it on Amazon, and but it just kept, I kept thinking about it, and knowing the fact that the movie was coming out soon, I wanted to definitely read this. So I decided to hop on the bandwagon and read this sooner rather than later, and I'm not disappointed at all. Um, I gave this a 4 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads. I just wish it could have had a little more development, I guess you could say. Like, I wasn't... I felt like it ramped up so fast that things kind of, like, flew off the handle, I guess you could say. Like, things started to go boom, 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 real quick towards the end. And I felt like it was almost too fast. And there was, like, a sense of, um this dreamy kind of, this is where I'm going to say the bizarro factor kind of keys in, because there's like, sometimes you're not really sure whether that event happened or if it was a dream sequence or, you know, we weren't really, I wasn't really sure what was going on 100% some of the time because sometimes the characters, you know, being trapped in their bathroom and they don't know like the passage of time, how much time has passed and they don't know if like, if they're going to get out and, like, live their lives and stuff like that. And then the building tension, because the family's already a wrecked kind of broken family, and they have their own personal issues that they're dealing with. And it was just, like, all that stuff kind of summed up, just made this a really good read for me. I'm hoping that me saying all that, without spoiling it, is going to let you know that this is a good read. Um, but like I said, 4 out of 5 star read for me. Um, I You can buy this directly from Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, but I'd greatly appreciate it if you purchased it through my link down below for Amazon. Um, I'm also going to try and see if I can find this on bookshop.org for those of you international folks. And if you got anything out of my reviews and recommendations, please donate to my coffee. Buy me a coffee, two or three. I need the energy and the motivation to keep going. And we all know with this pandemic and the way reviewers have been treated lately in the community, I need some motivation to keep going. If you don't have any money to help support me, you can help in other ways by hitting that subscriber button and hitting that notification bell and sharing this video with your friends. Thank you for watching, guys. It has been a really crummy 2020. So be good to each other and stay healthy.